Gentani, and welcome to the first ever episode of Godfather Minute Godfather Part Minute Two. Part Two. Uh, well, do we call? Are we going to call it that? Or are we going to? I think maybe we should call it Godfather Part Two Minute. Godfather Part Two Minute. I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. Because it's not. We're not doing the first movie over again. That would be Godfather right. Minute Part Two. We could do that if you <laughs> feel like you didn't get it enough. <laughs> oh my gosh, I cannot even imagine. And I'm so lo- I'm so looking forward to GF2. I don't want to go back to GF1. <laughs> There's still so much at we missed. At this point though. with Star Wars, at this point with Star Wars, I would go back and do I would rather to go back and do Star Wars than keep going with the new movies, but I don't feel that way with The hmm. Godfather at this point. So, you feel, you feel like you want to keep moving? Yeah, keep moving. Okay. Like uh for example, oh, first of all, I guess we should say I'm Alex Robinson. And I'm Andy Robinson. And together we are We're here to talk about Godf- minute one of Godfather, Godfather two. Part 2. <laughs> minute. <laughs> um, Alex, repeat after me. A minuto. A minuto. Numero. Numero. Uno. Uno. That's it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought you were um, playing America's favorite card game when you said that. That's why I was got all. That's why I. I uh, oh, that's why you were waiting. Game, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, um, minute one, uh, we open on the Paramount logo and fade to black. Mm-hmm. The eerie silence of the void, the endless darkness, a seeming reminder of man's folly and the nothingness that awaits us all. You feel your pulse start to race. The concept of your own mortality rattles around your psyche like so many nickels and dimes. You're about to cry out and are saved by a distant wailing of a French horn. Hey, that's the Godfather theme, you think? <laughs> Then another plug for Paramount Pictures before we're reintroduced to the titular godfather, Michael Francis Adams Corleone, Mm -hmm. who is having his hand kissed by another man. Did you say Adams? Adams, yeah. What, did he take Kay's last name? Well, when she changed, she legally changed her last name to Kay Adams Corleone, so he had his last name changed to Adams Corleone. Did he really do that, or are you just making that up? No, I'm just saying that that's more... If they did that now, he would have to do that. It would be considered more PC to... to oh, God. So he didn't really do that. You're making that up. <laughs> yeah, sometimes on the show, I'll do things <laughs> which are not actual true facts, but ah. which are just kind of like uh, like uh, an attempt at uh, buffoonery. <laughs> you, uh, you deliver it in such a straight manner. I, I couldn't tell. And you know, these days you never know you never know what people are doing you with their names know. and their identities. If you want to from now on, when I'll raise I'll put my hand up because you're watching me on the video <laughs> and then uh, you can see that that means I'm making a joke. Well, but part of me believes that believed that he would change his name to Adams because then he would no longer be tied to the bad reputation of the Corleones, right? Adams as a as a historical name does have a lot more value in America. There's a lot of famous Adams. I mean, just you got uh, John Adams, John Quincy Adams, Gomez Adams. <laughs> I mean, the list is endless. Just flash forward to the Senate hearing later on in Godfather mm-hmm. Part Two, and when he's talking about his name being besmirched and right. how his children need a fair shot at the American dream. Uh, you know, yeah. with Adams, I think they'd get a better shot. I wonder if um, any of the uh, Corleone children uh, renounced their family name. That would probably break Pop's heart. Whoa, heck yeah. Yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah. interesting. Or changed it as the times went on and like Americanized it. We'll probably get there in GF2 when we get to the Ellis Island scene, right? Right. Because they do yeah. change his name, but they don't change it to an American name. I guess you could see either direction. You could either see it as 
You could either say, I'm going to renounce my family, my father's family, and go with the last name Adams, or you could say, I'm going to double down on my father's family and go with Andolini. Oh, yeah. That's his. That's what he's called in Sicily. Yeah. So that would be like, oh, the, you know, they changed it on the way over here. Yeah. But um, I wonder if they would change it to something like Carlton. Carleone? That, we're going to just call you Carlton. Vito <laughs> Carlton. <laughs> Um, of course, Senator Geary is now working at Ellis Island. <laughs> well, it's his. It's his like f- grandfather. Oh, that's right. I guess it would be his. Yeah, it would be his, his grandfather. grandfather yeah, Vito yeah, Cor- so, uh, Vito Corleone. We'll call you uh, Vito. He still keeps Vito. Vito <laughs> Carlson. <laughs> Let you into this god green country of ours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Alex, we're back in GF two. What this is, is historic for you, for you and me. We we've, we've been at GF one for literally years. You you feel fresh. You feel renewed. I do. I do feel um, excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll be it'll 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 be tough, kind of out of the gate because we start with Sicily, and those are always tougher scenes to do. So mm-hmm. uh, we'll see what happens, but. I feel like we're coming in. We're we're well rested. We're ready to take on uh, whatever Godfather Two has to offer. We're gonna leave it all out there on the podcasting field. Yes, I toward the end of GF One, I I was starting to feel like Hyman Roth near the end of GF Two. How how so? Like beat down, you know, it hurt. It hurt to pee. I I overheated so much. Your ballot, yeah. Uh, but now I feel like I've gotten the triple bypass surgery. The Cuban doctors, <laughs> despite not, not being proficient in English, did a great job. I'm renewed and I'm ready to rock. I'm I'm ready to take on those Rosado brothers. <laughs> it's Robinson brothers versus Rosado brothers. <laughs> uh, so uh, we do see the Paramount logo, mm-hmm. uh, and. Um, it, you know, as uh, my other my day job as a Star Wars podcaster, uh, it's always a big moment where, um, you know, I always go see it, have to go see it the first day because otherwise everything gets spoiled. So the people are always very excited. And even when the Lucasfilm logo comes up, people go like, "Woo!" and make noises and things like All that. Right. So it's fu- it's funny to imagine a bunch of Godfather heads getting going, oh, woo! when they see the uh, the paramount logo come up you know just out of, out of, out of excitement especially in that the font you know and the, you hear the horn you know the horn and everything so yeah what do you think people would be cheering the audience just just what do you mean just whooping and hollering or would they be yeah, chanting they wouldn't be going like, like that or, uh, no. <laughs> I'm not there. oh the hardcore gfm fans would be saying would be saying that yeah Zaza. but not like that's only a very those that's how you know who the ha- real true fans yeah. are. Because uh, I think we could get a chant going like "Leave the gun, take the cannoli. Leave the gun, take the cannoli." <laughs> I think only if the movie was running late could you do that. Oh. People would start chanting along with it. <laughs> yeah. You have to be careful about yelling about guns in a theater. That's uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you used to have to be. I don't know. About yeah. Now anymore. it's your right, your obligation to do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's great to see that um, Paramount logo again and. I don't know if you noticed it, Alex. It's I don't know if it was me, but it seemed like the, it's the logo had an orange hue to it that I don't remember mm-hmm. from the first Godfather movie. And I was wondering if it was done on purpose because it's kind of that's kind of the color of GF two. It's kind of got this orangish. It's kind of like sepia a, tone. Yeah, sepia. That's it. Sepia tone. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you notice that? Well, um, it's funny because I don't know if you're talking. Do you mean where it's where the Paramount logo is kind of like flying in? Yeah, and the, spinning the, around sorry, the Paramount thing. image, the mountain and the snow and the, yeah. the thing comes whirling in. Yeah, it's very yeah. orange, orangish. I feel like that isn't the original Paramount logo. Mm. I feel like that's like a like oh now on Blu-ray kind of a mm. like updated kind of thing, and, and maybe they put that kind of thought into it. I, I it'd be nice to think so. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure. It really fits the, uh, the yeah. tone. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, good for them for updating uh, it. Uh, yeah, because I think this is like the remastered one from the Blu-ray if you're keeping track at home mm. and want to follow along. Um, I did notice that on the mountain, the drawing of the mountain, it's a glaciated uh-huh. peak, meaning there's ice yeah. on it 
year round, but the glaciers have retreated a little bit. So they've updated mm. the image to reflect climate change. It's all golf courses on it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's something fun I learned today. Um, Paramount is owned by the company Gulf and Western, a big financial company. And uh, apparently the person who owned or one of the big wigs at Gulf and Western um, was interested in turning the Dominican Republic into a like Hollywood, into like a place where people would go to film a lot of movies, uh. like build a film industry there. And so apparently that's part of the reason why this still like the Cuba scenes are filmed in the Dominican Republic. But it makes me wonder because that stuff was all new. It wasn't oh, in the original book. Whoa. So it makes me wonder if they decided to include Cuba because they like were told they have to include like, like they have to film something in the Dominican oh, Republic. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Yeah, it's funny. Funny See, to are imagine. You, are, is that are you speculating that? The, the fact that it says that Gulf and West, the person who worked at Gulf and Western, um, really like was putting a lot of um, like emphasis on wanting Dominican Republic to have a film industry. Got it. So there's no so it doesn't specifically. So there's a lot of buffers in between. Yeah. There's no there's no smoking gun of like the story was originally going to be about uh, you know Toronto and they wow. changed it to Havana. That is fascinating. So, if that's uh, true, that those. Those logistics yeah. guided the, the the setting of the movie. That that would really be incredible. That they worked it in. <laughs> well, especially because it all worked way. out. Yeah, well, so. because it's such a strong story and it fits, yeah. and it, yeah. but also fits with with the real history of the mob having some roots right. in Cuba. Not yeah. roots, but expansion into Cuba. That's great. Yeah. I also like that in a way. It kind of echoes the power. of of like the mafia where they go to Francis Ford Coppola and like, listen, we got some filming locations in the Dominican Republic. Why don't you include a scene set in the tropics or something? Wait a minute. Are you trying to muscle me into the Caribbean? <laughs> Waltz International Films Hall. It's pictures on location in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> That's even funnier to think that Jack Waltz, the character and the real, the character is the real guy and he's the one who is making GF2. <laughs> wow, it's real meta. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's always like commenting on the scene we just saw. What the hell are you flashing back in time for? People aren't going to know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> Tom, why don't you tell me we had to film scenes in, in Dominican Republic? <laughs> you appreciate a good beach, don't you, Tom? <laughs> Uh, apparently one of the notes that the studio had or an early version of GF2, um, it did get uh, a lot of criticism for the flashbacks mm. because they flashbacked, the flashbacks were a lot shorter and happened more frequently. Mm. So like instead of having like three big chunks of like 45 minutes or whatever, however long those scenes are, it was like 10 scenes of like three minutes long. So you're, you're constantly much more going back and forward. And they said, you got it. It's it's too confusing having that go oh, on. So yeah. that's he kind of consolidated the, 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 the flashback scenes into larger chunks. So you got kind of more involved in what was going on there as opposed to. The yeah, yeah. Well, forth. after when we get to those scenes, we'll uh, we we'll assess and we'll answer. And we'll judge. <laughs> we'll be the judge. <laughs> what would you a flashback judge? Get back to work. <laughs> oh, Clemenza, we already missed Clemenza. Oh, that's true. And we're gonna miss Mrs. Clemenza's witty dialogue. Yeah, yeah although I, wonderful notice. I think she found what? ways to still stay integrated into the writing of the script. She was a force Do you think she of was like a ghost writer? <laughs> oh, ghost writer. Poor choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> um, the film was shot uh, starting the 1st of October, 1973. Mm -hmm. Almost 50, over 50 years. Wow. No, almost over. I can't remember what year it is. <gasps> yeah. Almost 50, 50 years, years ago. Yeah. Uh, and uh, sh shooting concluded on June 19th, mm -hmm. 1974. That's right, Tic Tac. Uh, it was the last major film shot in Technicolor. Hmm. So maybe that's another reason why it has that kind of old school kind of look yeah, to it. Yeah, um, it was one of the. F it was the first major motion picture 
to be called part two or have like a two in the number. Whoa. Because up until then, it was always like the son of the Godfather, the Godfather returns, wow. the Godfather's revenge. Oh, yeah. Like you didn't want people to think they were seeing like, uh, you know, I don't know. Well, yeah. yeah, I don't know what the, I guess the people would think they were just seeing the same movie again. I don't know what, I, why numbers were not included. You know, if it weren't such a. It seems so obvious in retrospect. Well, yeah, yes and no. <laughs> Looking back. If it hadn't been such a great movie, I think I would not mm-hmm. have liked the name The Godfather Part Two. It it, it kind of sounds admit, really I'm, classy, but probably only because the movie is so good. It's kind of a simple, I don't want to say a dumb name, yeah. but I it's okay. I personally think it's uh, it's uncreative to call movies something too. Yeah, or you know, I would rather it be called uh, you know The Return of the Godfather or yeah. Well, even that, I wish it was more. That's a good. So, what would a good title for it be? Oh, that's a great question. Like the Fall of the Godfather, or uh, assuming it has to have good of assuming it has to have the Godfather in the title. It depends what you're going or, for. Unless you totally want to call it something. Different, well, I'm like, I'm really keeping I'm keeping an open mind about it. If we keep it a drama as it is, uh-huh. I would do something <laughs> like that. Like something like yeah, uh, the movie is exactly the same, but you're just putting a different title on it. Okay, then I would keep it something simple like The Godfather Returns or, uh, you know, The Godfather. Another Godfather. <laughs> Another Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> but if you wanted to spin it a little bit, you could call it like Senator Senator Geary's Revenge. Just, just Senator Geary's revenge, yeah, or, or or maybe like the Godfather versus Hyman Roth, yeah, or something like, like yeah, that. <laughs> add some more elements, or or if you want to make it a comedy, call it like Fredo goes to yeah. Havana. <laughs> well, what do you think about Col- like Godfather colon Fredo in Havana? <laughs> <laughs> yes, or something I like, like that. that. The Godfather, <laughs> the Godfather colon, no, 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 whatever the t- no, it's called Cuba Libra colon Fredo goes to Havana. Colon, the Godfather Part Two returns. <laughs> I like it. It's going to be a, a very crowded marquee, but I yeah. think it'll be totally worth it. It's a long movie. It should have a long. Yeah, title. they should re- They should have a new name for it every fifteen minutes in the movie. That'd be great <laughs> if it just keeps fading to black and it says "end" or "fiend," and then it yeah. fades back in and there's another name for the next segment of the movie. <laughs> I guess it's just like chapters. chapters like yeah. I've, I guess some movies do yeah, do that, where yeah. they'll have like a title card or something, mm-hmm. like six months later yeah. or something like but that. But some of them would be very short. Like uh, yeah. one would be called "They're Bigger Than U.S. Steel," and and it's just that next scene, and then that scene ends. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, they're bigger than U.S. Yeah, Steel? because it's the narrator saying that Hyman Roth and the Corleones they are bigger oh. than U.S. Steel. Or maybe it would be yeah. we're bigger than U.S. Steel. I would just say bigger than U.S. Oh. Steel. <laughs> so it leaves you wondering who's who, <laughs> yeah, totally. who owns it. Yeah. Huh. Although you might just say Godfather colon U.S. Steel because that'll sort of also indicate <laughs> oh. that it's going to be taking a more corporate uh, you know, direction yeah. in the future. With the mobile. Yeah. Oh, and, and you use the font so that steel, mm-hmm. it could be E-E-L or E-A-L. E A L U S Steel. Oh, I like remember God, it. Remember, What's wrong with it? Remember, Hyman Roth says uh, someone who can become president just needs enough cash to make it happen. <laughs> I always include a pun in my lectures. <laughs> <laughs> when you and we're bringing in Dino and Eddie to make sure the font, <laughs> make sure the font can be interpreted in more than one way. <laughs> Dino and Eddie are really uh, graphic designers from St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Made a fortune <laughs> back in the glory days of the internet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's what else see we what got? Else? Um, oh, so the movie picks up exactly where GF One left off. Alex, did you notice that? Well, I guess it would probably be like, like 10 seconds before it ended. Well, you see in the beginning of GF2, you see Rocco kissing Michael's ring. Did we see right. that? I thought we saw oh, Al shut the door. Yeah. But we had and you seen. You do see Col- in the background. Did you see Rocco? You see Rocco. Yeah. Okay. I was looking to see if it was, if they just reused the same footage. Oh, no. 
but the the end of GF one you're seeing it from far away, mm-hmm. and this one you're almost seeing it from like Clemenza's point of yeah. view. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know if they shot the originally or whether they are just recreating that. You know. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. Way. At the end of GF one, we were we the viewers were outside the room. We the people. We the people were outside the room with K. We were shut out. Shut yeah. totally out. But now we're inside the room. Mm. And it's easy to see them being like, well, let's shoot it in close up too. And we can decide if we want to use the far away shot or the close up just in case. Mm-hmm. So I, I bet they I bet they uh just shot the same thing yeah. there over again. Well, Alex, what um, it virtually more or less it's it's a continuation of exactly where right. it left off. So do you know yeah. any other movies that do that? Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of other right? movies that do that. And he come yeah. to mind. The only one that comes to mind to me is Karate Kid Part 1 and 2. The one ends with the he wins the trophy. And yeah. the second second one starts where they're leaving the tournament in the parking lot. And the Cobra Kai coach comes out and picks a fight with uh, Mr. Miyagi. Uh-huh. <laughs> And that happens right after. You know, everyone looks like slightly older. <laughs> yeah, they, it takes place seconds later. Well, they they made they shot in a parking lot to make sure it was dark yeah. enough. They can have uh, understudies come in and play all kinds <laughs> of studio tricks. Any other movies come to mind? Uh, well, there was a James Bond movie recently where that happened, where it it starts off literally like right after, hmm. like at the end of one episode, he captures the bad guy. One of the recent ones, one of the Daniel Craig ones. And then the next one takes place literally like right after that one ended. So um, that's cool. I like that. That's that's one recently. I think um, I feel like at least one of the Back to the Future movies must do mm. that. I've never seen any of the sequels. Hmm. Back to the Future. Hmm. Yeah. I would be surprised uh, if any of the Back to the Future ones had a very smooth segue in in time because weren't they isn't that their whole shtick they kept going back so you think it'd be a flashback well you might be curious to you might not know that part two and part three were filmed back to back oh really yeah because they they were like this is going to be a complicated story we need oh wow it'll just be cheaper and more efficient if we both just do them both at the same time because they have a lot of scenes that take place in both movies you know so they uh so, uh, but I'm sure there are other Back to the Future. I'm not a Back to the Future expert, but so I'm sure people are yelling at us right now mm-hmm. about how we're mm-hmm. totally misremembering things. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty sure in the last scene where Spock dies, I'm pretty sure that takes place uh, right before the next scene where we see Voldemort in the next movie. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. All right. So are you recommending, are you officially recommending uh, Back to the Future too? Oh, yeah. I enjoy Back to the Future too. And, and of course it turned out to be... Um, uh, you know, eerily prescient because we're basically living in the bad universe that was cre- was where the bad guy won that they're trying to avert in Back to the Future Two. Oh yeah, because in, in, in Back to the Future Two, we find out that the bad guy ha- found a sports almanac. That's and right. Then when he went back to the fifties, he bet on all these games and became like basically a multimillionaire guy who you know, bought the town and turned it all to casinos <laughs> and stuff like that. So, uh, Oh, he's such a, not he's like such a bad else. guy <laughs> building all these casinos, right? Providing jobs for people right? and so on. Yeah. Come on. Admit it. You're rooting for Michael Corleone and in, in Tahoe and Vegas, right? <laughs> that would be an interesting crossover to see, uh, to see <laughs> dealing with the Corleones in a, uh, are you saying what if Biff matter? had been in, had played the role of Michael Corleone, and, or, or not? No, no, not, being sorry, like not Mo the Green. role, but it's actually Biff in part two. They don't explain that he's married to Kay. He's has his grandchild who is Anthony, who is uh, having his communion. Oh, like it's just Biff. like I feel like part two, uh, like yeah, Connie's husband was was Biff. But it would almost it doesn't work because I'm trying to think of someone who he would basically replace a character, <laughs> like he would replace Robert Duvall, and suddenly he'd be played by like Biff because Biff went back in time and took over his job. Yeah. But it would never be explained in the movie, like who you know what I mean. Well, Does I was that saying that's sense? that's Michael. So Michael is now yeah. Biff, and it's it's just just Biff. There is no Michael Corleone. It's Biff. 
Right. And he's the one running the family and calling all the shots. And I like it. I like. I would it. love to see Biff and Frankie Five Angels having a conversation, you know? What are you supposed to do? They're both just going back and forth. I don't remember how Biff sounds. Do your best Biff, Alex. Duh, you call me a chicken? Yeah. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> you wait online like I said you wait online like everyone else Pantangeli <laughs> <laughs> wait so how do we start talking about Biff oh yeah movies that <laughs> end with the exact same scene yeah. that uh, I feel like there must be others if, you know what people should leave it in the comment section below other movies that have mm-hmm. um, I know there are other there ones. have to be yeah yeah technically part of um, Star Wars The Last Jedi I don't know does this count because Star Wars The Force Awaken ends with uh, Rey handing the lightsaber to Luke. Mm. And we when then in The Last Jedi, it's one it's not the first scene, it's the second scene in the movie yeah. and it's Luke taking the does that count? Chronologically yeah. it's it's right it's afterwards. It's pretty close, but yeah. I think it's close. It's not like if you threaded the movies together, yeah. you know, it would be a What about uh, what thing. about Rogue One and Episode 4? Oh, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, that's, exactly. Even that was retroactively yeah, made uh, yeah. into a. Uh, uh, that's kind of cool how they they went back and connected them that way. Mm, I think I think yeah. the people the Disney Disney made Rogue One right. Yeah, I think Disney the people that design the people that wrote Rogue One were big Karate Kid Part Two fans, mm. and they they saw that and they said, "Oh, we have to create Rogue One just so we can have that same transition effect." Actually, isn't the thing didn't the the, the didn't they do a re a, a sequel to the thing, the John Carpenter thing that oh, basically they, yes you're right it's a different camp and it ends with the dogs running away you're and right that's, that's, that's another or, however one. they get to the yeah, camp so yeah that's it's, another it's one another they, one that's connected yeah good memory yeah well these are both prequels also yes. which is slightly different than doing a sequel mm-hmm. that takes place mm-hmm. right after so yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, speaking of prequel, I just learned a new term, preekend. Have you heard that? Which that uh, Friday? Friday. Yeah, it's Thursday right? lunch to Friday and to work. The preekend. <laughs> I never yeah. heard that before. Do people use that? I didn't hear it either. I know where you got it from, but uh, yeah, I never heard it before that usage either. I like it. I though. like it's it a lot. Good, yeah, I'm gonna start uh, using it's, it. It's a good phrase. I'm always a fan of the, the where you take two words, you know, like a single or caffeinasium or you know. Yeah. Portmanteau, I believe that is called. Well, maybe we can start doing that in our bonus content. We can try to create new vocabulary. Of new as a as a uh, oh as a uh, something to strive for as mm-hmm. a recurring bit. Okay, you writing it down? I wrote it good, down. Good. Well, the only other item I had, have, Alex, uh, is that uh, it. It was really cool to hear those iconic Godfather horns again at the at the beginning of this mm-hmm. movie, and I. Mm-hmm. I think i tried to remember back to hearing them the first time or at least at the beginning of godfather one hearing them but not yet knowing the story now right. that it's godfather part two hearing that mm-hmm. you know this the whole all everything that took place in the first movie so those that melody means something different now right yeah very good i, I don't know I like music it. sometimes mean I, I think of music that way the context is different. Now. Yes. That's it. Context is different. A different pre right. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's perking for the pre <laughs> You know what? I totally forgot. I can't believe it's right in front of us. But in GF3, the first like half an hour is just GF2 recap. Oh, we talked so about this a few weeks ago. That one literally takes place right. Literally the last 20 minutes of the movie are the first 20 minutes of GF3. Yeah. So oh, I know. It's... I. No I haven't problem. watched the new release of Coda GF3, yeah. that, that. Uh-huh. but I'm, I'm hoping they just scrub that whole thing out. We'll see. <laughs> uh, so what do you want to rate this minute? We still do one to five? Sure, unless you want to change it up. You want to make it one to seven? Keep talking. I'll make it one to ten. <laughs> Let's do one to seven. Let's just try it. One to seven. Okay, it's going to totally throw off. Like when people want to compare how we feel about That's one minute. True. You know, maybe we should keep it consistent. Show. Let's do one to five. No, let's make it one to seven. Okay, I was going to say let's really compress and do one one or two. 
Oh, basically pass fail. Like thumbs up or thumbs down. Would you watch oh. this minute again? <laughs> well, I'd watch every minute again at some point. It's not like I would never like, I would say cut that movie out of the, cut that <laughs> seat minute out of the movie. Yeah. I guess, I guess, you know what? I guess how about this? That's what it's going to be. How about if you vote thumbs down, that means you vote that that scene be totally cut out of the movie. Whoa. That minute. <laughs> Well, that's too, no, but then we're going to get no thumbs Never down. Gonna, yeah. My, my yeah. calibration is if yeah. on your lunch break, you could watch just that one minute as a kind of a bonus to your lunch break. Would you choose to watch yeah. it or would you spend that minute doing something else? Hmm. Okay. All right. Ready? Wait, how about this? <laughs> It's a similar along. Let me see if I'm if I'm along the same long the line same along the same lines as you. Hey, by the I way, I hope we watching, decide soon because I got stuff to do this pre end <laughs> I got. Uh, I'm watching The Godfather, uh-huh. and uh, I'm going to look at it as if I'm watching The Godfather and I either start watching this now or if I'm like. And then when I'm when the scene is over and I go, okay, I'm going to now turn the channel. Would this be what I've turned the channel during this during this minute? Mm, or not? That's what it's going to be for I me. I like, like it. Is there a scene where I'm like, okay, this is I know what's coming. This is kind of a boring talky scene. I can now go go uh, do my dishes or whatever. I like you it. Know, I know I have some time before I. Okay, I, I like it. So that's that is a thumbs up and thumbs yeah, down. Yeah, we'll, we'll call it thumbs up, thumbs down, but we'll also do a 1 to 5. That's perfect because you have to make a decision about that minute. It's not about what's coming up. It's literally about this 1 minute. Yeah. So you have to decide am I turning? And the turning could be for 1 minute and when you turn back cuz you know the next minute might be better. I right. like it. I like it, Cisco. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, um I guess thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay. One, two, three. Two, three. Thumbs, thumbs down. down. I hate starting the show with a thumbs down. I know, but okay, we'll rate it one to five. <laughs> like that's gonna be better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we gotta build up to it. Yeah, we gotta build up on. to it. It can't so, all be five uh, so. minutes, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's come true. on, compare this to we're bigger than US Steel. Or well, like it's how do you say than US how, do, steel. how do you say banana daiquiri? I mean, you just come on. You right. can't come you're, here, right? You're right. You're All right, you ready to rate it? Yes. One, one, two. two. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We we did yeah. it. Well, um, Alex, you want to talk? So yeah, you want to talk about the bonus section at all? We might have some well, new one listeners. feature. One new feature we're going to have. Uh, yeah. So if this is your first episode, we do um, this. You obviously listen to this for free if you wanted to, but you can also listen to it at our Patreon uh, feed, which you can get by going to godfatherminute.com slash support. And um, we're going to record another bit of the show. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you like us yakking, um, then start. Uh, Attack him, your wallet, <laughs> and give us your money. Go to godfatherminute.com slash support. And uh, hey, I guess wait, until wait, wait, next wait, time. Wait, hold on. I got another one. Oh, wait, hold on. I got another one. If you like us. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you like us gabbing, you should go grabbing your wallet. <laughs> and give us some money. Because we yeah. need money. <laughs> 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 hey, and don't forget to check out my band, The Underdog Night Soldiers. We are on Spotify, YouTube, everywhere you can stream and download music. We have some Godfather novelty songs. I, I accept that I'm a novelty songwriter, but I have some non-Godfather songs, too, there that we're very proud of. Check them out. Be proud. Check them out. And also, um, if you are listening to this in podcast form, we appreciate it. But, you know, we also... Uh, you can also listen to it on the YouTube. We decided to give a little upstart named YouTube a chance to uh, prove their metal. So how do people go to that, Andrew? They, well, we have a Godfather Minute YouTube channel, so they can subscribe to that, and boom, the videos will be sent right to their their feed. Uh, or they could just Google okay. Godfather Minute. I think we're going to call them Godfather Part 2 Minutes. Just minute. Like minute. Just like we do the episodes. Right. All right, we took care of all that housekeeping stuff, Alex. And by the way, I'm very excited to be starting this new movie. It's a it's a whole new beginning of a new journey. It's like beginning of the Appalachian Trail. We're in North Georgia. We we're looking ahead. We got our packs on. We got our toe warmers activated. Our dehydrated 
food all packed and ready to go, boots on, broken in, we're ready to rock. We just stepped off the bridge at Ellis Island. Ah, we're smelling that freedom and rotting fish in America. We're like, this is it. I don't care if I have scarlet fever. I'm moving to America. Yeah, Fredo just landed at McCarran Airport in Vegas. He's like, ah, oh, I'm going to learn the <laughs> casino business. I'm like, this is going to be a great new phase of my life. <laughs> Who else, Alex? Uh, and meanwhile, uh, Heimer and Roth is cracking open a, a thing of uh, molasses <laughs> with, and it's actually filled with <laughs> bourbon in it. Cheech finally gives his deposition to the Senate committee. He's, oh, he's like, this weight's lifted off his shoulders. He's so excited. <laughs> um, yeah. What about Polly? So, uh, Something about Polly. Come on. Oh, no, no, no. You won't see Polly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, so, um, all right, everyone, until next week. (laughs) 